Hello everyone and welcome to our new episode of the Expat Career and Lifestyle podcast. This is Dominika, your host, and today I am coming to you with a special guest. David McNeil is the founder of Expact Empire and he is helping and inspiring people to move abroad and showing them how to do that. He is involved in many projects. He is doing online courses, books, blog posts, uh, meetups and more. And he is helping people to, le- uh, to reach their international dreams and have this opportunity to live abroad. So welcome, welcome David. So please um, tell us more about you, how your international journey started. So I know that you are from US and now you are based in Portugal. So tell us more about yeah how you started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be on your great show. So yeah, just a bit of my background. I know it can get long, so I'll try to keep it short and I'm happy to answer any questions that uh, come up uh, mm-hmm. in, our, in our conversation here. But yeah, basically born and raised in the United States. Uh, I got an interest in studying the Japanese language. Uh, I was quite interested in Japanese culture from the age of 12. And uh, yeah, so an interesting kind of hobby of mine, but I really pursued that with some passion. And I went to Japan for the first time, uh, you know, just traveling around homestay and all that good stuff for uh, one month when I was 17. Absolutely loved it. And I knew that that's the place that I really want to be, uh, at least, you know, as my next goal. So going into university at 18, I went to the University of Texas at Austin. And there I studied Japanese as well as finance to try to do something to give me a little uh, leverage or uh, a way forward in terms of trying to get that international career. Mm -hmm. So uh, I looked very hard for a job in Japan coming out of university. I wasn't able to find it. So I started out my career in the United States and I thought I'd get some experience there. So I worked as an investment banking analyst for two and a half years first in Charlotte, North Carolina, and then I transitioned to San Francisco. And after that, I joined uh, a mobile gaming company as a product manager. So that was my first job in product management. So I thought I would be working there in San Francisco, just working at this tech company. And lo and behold, about nine months into my job there, the opportunity came up to go to Beijing, China for three months and work with the team locally on the ground there. So I said, absolutely, I'd love to go, this is awesome. And I had a great experience. Coming back from that, I said, please send me back for longer, for a year this time or more. I loved it. Let's do this. And I got laid off. So uh, I took that and said, well, I don't really want any company to decide whether or not I get abroad. So I took a trip around Europe. And while I was doing that for about nine weeks, I was also taking interviews in China and Japan. So again, I just been to China. I thought maybe I could leverage that into an opportunity to again, work there. And Japan was my dream. And at the end of that trip, on the very last day, I had my final interview for a job in Japan. I managed to get the offer about one or two weeks later, packed up my bags, and I got my visa and headed to Tokyo back in 2014. So I spent, in short, two years in Tokyo. There, as I saw my job kind of coming to an end and not finding that next opportunity that I was really searching for, I decided to look into Berlin, Germany, another city on my to-do list. Mm -hmm. So I went there for three years and then got married there and my wife and I decided that we want to move here to Portugal. So I've been here in Porto, Portugal, or just outside of Porto for the last year and a half. Mm. Yeah. So why did you choose uh, Portugal? Like what, what attracted you to this, uh, to this country? Yeah. Portugal is a wonderful place. And basically my wife and I started and when we were just dating, so my girlfriend at the time, we were just kind of talking about where it might be next for us after Germany. So she had, she's from Japan. Uh, she'd been in Germany for five years <clears throat> across Frankfurt and Berlin. So we met there in Berlin and we were just talking about different uh, ideas. And she quickly came up with Portugal and she'd mm-hmm. never been here, but uh, had seen great you know, pictures, had heard great things. And I had visited at the end of the tail end of that trip that I had in 2014 around Europe. And I also had a good memories of it. So we thought, okay, let's book a trip to come see it together. So we did that in October of 2018. We did a couple of days in Porto, a couple of days in Lisbon, and we just left thinking this is the spot for us. We really want to make it happen. So it took some time uh, to, to have it come to fruition about one year, uh, but we moved here in November of 2019 when I got a job here uh, outside of Porto. So as for why, it's just a, it's a beautiful country, very welcoming, great weather, great food, 
uh, yeah, I like to say warm people and war uh, warm weather. So really, I think those are the main things, but there's, there's a lot of reasons and we really love our life here. Mm, fantastic. Yeah, Portugal is definitely on my list too. Uh, <laughs> for my <laughs> next, for my next, yeah, for my next trip as an expat or digital nomad. Yes. Great. Yeah. So one of the, um, um, let's say one of the opportunities to have this um, expat or international lifestyle, global uh, mobile lifestyle is to have, uh, is to turn your passion or your side hustle into a business, a mobile business or a portable, portable business. So uh, could you please uh, share with us um, a little bit more about that, like steps, how to turn your passion uh, into a portable business or online business? Yeah, I think uh, uh, I'd be happy to share, of course, my, my experience, my, <clears throat> my feedback on my own process. But one thing that I think is definitely important to pick up there is on the passion. So uh, I, I, there are definitely people who go down paths and, and build businesses where they're not super passionate about it, but that's not a good fit for me. I know that I need to be super passionate about it. And I know that how much time that I, and energy that I've put into it, and I'm sure you and your listeners as well will definitely put into their businesses. You have to be passionate about it because it's a ton of work. And there are definitely days where you don't want to do anything. <laughs> you don't want to even be maybe associated with it anymore. You just want to walk off into the horizon with no, nothing holding you back. But I think that passion is what brings you back to it. So I think it's really important. And in, in my case, the passion for me was really, again, about being able to help other people to move abroad. It's been such an important driver uh, of change in my life and wonderful experiences over all those countries that I mentioned. But uh, what I saw is that I was moving country to country with getting new jobs in each place. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yeah, it's a great way to get around. But what I realized is that I was not really passionate, even as a product manager, it was kind of an interesting role, but it wasn't really my passion. None of the projects or products that I was working on were all that really deeply interesting to me. It was just a means to get around the world. So now I have that passion for recognizing, you know, seeing across my career, moving to different countries. Okay, now I have that experience, I have that knowledge. How can I leverage that into building a business that would allow me to sponsor myself, to become a digital nomad, to just live those dreams without having to be sponsored and uh, worry, worry about that through someone else or another company. So I think that's a key part is definitely find something you have a passion for, then just put it, putting up landing pages, starting to build your website, putting up an Instagram account, you know, however you want to do it and wherever your audience is, frankly. So definitely figure out where your audience is and where you can tap into them. Um, so I think that's important to do. And what I've seen in my case is that pretty much I, I did this as a side project. Uh, I started in 2018. That was the launch. I actually started working on it uh, in 2017. Originally, it was launching the website and a book called Passport to Working in Japan about my time working there and trying to help other people to get there. And so uh, as I was doing that, I was basically able to first try my hand at being an author. So I was not an author, uh, but then I wrote a book and I was you know, working really hard on that for nine months and I released that. Then I was recording conversations and interviews with my friends and different people I knew along my journey abroad. And so that became the Expat Empire podcast and uh, started doing some blog posts as well. Then when I moved here to Porto, I started the Expat Empire Porto meetup. So I'm meeting people and ultimately building the brand that way. And I also put up a landing page for consulting services just to see what would happen. And all of a sudden, after, you know, after a couple of months, not immediate traction, but after some months, suddenly people started going to it, finding it on Google and then reaching out to me. And I started having this conversation. So I think it's a great way to just put something out there that you're passionate about, see what comes back, use it as a testing ground. And especially if you can do that while you're getting income from somewhere else, mm. then you can just reinvest that income back into the business until it's making money for you. Mm. So I think those are all good kind of ways to do it and how I've seen this work for me. And then what made me make the jump into turning this full time was seeing that I was getting enough traction. I was you know, really delivering services and products that my customers appreciated. People were reaching out for more information. So I was getting those good signals from the market. And then I got laid off from my job and I thought, okay, maybe this is the real time to double down on this and see if it's mm -hmm. a possibility. So I think just keeping an eye out for where you can make money, testing a lot of things, seeing if it's working, and then finding those opportunities to turn it in that into your full-time business. If you don't do that straight from the get-go, I think that's a good way to do it. And just make sure that you have enough runway in terms of your investments and savings to be able to 
make it last until you can really decide whether or not it's working for you and able to be successful long term. Yes, I think this is very important what you have said that um, like having an in, um, investment or the yeah, money to, to put aside or having a job also, this can be seen as an investment into your business. So in the meantime, you can work on, on your idea, you can, you can test it or yeah, you can just uh, share, your, share your message and uh, slowly get, uh, get visible. So this is very important. Um, but for example, I... Um, I hear from many people what um, what is going to happen if, if my business idea is not going to work or how mm. I can know exactly that this is a good business idea, that my passion is a business idea, that this is something that people are looking for, that I can sell it. Yeah, it's a great question. I think we're all going through that until we have some meaningful, sustainable business. I mean, I'm in the process of, you know, building and so I'm, I'm still in that mindset as well. And uh, I think until you're sort of comfortably got that foundation there on a monthly basis, then you'll probably always exist in that space. So that's very normal. I think that concern is very valid. I think the best way to do it and what I've seen is just putting up, again, putting up some landing pages and seeing, you know, getting it indexed by Google, seeing if traffic comes that way, seeing if you're able to get some traction through social media channels. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, uh, the big thing for me was also, for example, putting up that consulting page initially, built it, you know, put a lot of energy into it, but I didn't even announce it. I didn't even promote it. I was in the middle of some life changes in Berlin and uh, getting married and all of this stuff. So I put it out there and I just sort of let it sit. And then people started contacting me. I was like, oh, this is interesting. So that's a good sign. Well, let me set up a call with these people. And then I had calls and I wasn't selling anything. I was mm -hmm. just asking, what are you thinking about? What are your concerns? What are your challenges? What are your pain points? What type of help are you looking for? And based on that, I developed services, which then I started selling. People started buying. And it kind of just went from there. So no, no two stories are the same. And I'm not just trying to say that this is the only way to do it or mm -hmm. I've done it perfectly. I'm sure there's you know, dozens of things I could have done much better. But uh, just to say that it's possible that it could fail. Uh, that's always a possibility. Even successful companies go bankrupt, right? But so it's always possible. It's just recognizing that having a backup plan as far as doing it as a side hustle or you know, uh, having those savings that we talked about earlier. And then just putting stuff out there, listening to your customers, seeing what comes back to you as you put it out into the internet. And from there, hopefully you can be able to make those decisions. I mean, you can always spend some Google AdWords money on it. You can mm -hmm. do some social media ads, see how people react. But I think it's, I, I'm a big fan of organic traffic because you don't have to keep paying for it and it keeps paying dividends over time. So mm -hmm. I, uh, that's been my main strategy. Uh, and just to, again, put it out there and see what comes back to you. And are people willing to ultimately pay? Uh, it has to go back to money, right? So um, yeah, I hope that's helpful a bit. Yeah, yeah, like doing your mar market research, as you said, like having those conversations uh, with uh, with people and asking them about challenges and problems that they what what kind of help that they are looking for. So this is also like useful to understand what you can what you can offer. No, what what is your product and how you can solve solve problems. Yeah, if if I could add one other thing though, I would also say, go into it again, from a market research, a learning mindset, and don't go and build a ton of stuff before you get it validated. I mean, I think that's a common place where people go wrong is that, uh, I, and it's definitely may, maybe more developers or things like that. So um, perhaps not applicable to everybody, but just like building some cool technological product, building uh, some new technology, a brand new app, a brand new site. And then everyone, uh, you know, is either they, they don't find it or the people that find it think it's cool, but they wouldn't pay for it. Or maybe they don't think it's cool and only the developer thought it was cool. So mm -hmm. I think it's good to, uh, before you invest that way, uh, technologically in building things, try to uh, do things manually. I mean, automate the process that you can easily with things like Zapier and MailChimp and different automation flows, but really go to... Uh, be as manual as you need to and set up those landing pages, drive some traffic to it, whether through paid or organic, as we talked about, and then just see what happens before you actually do one hour of development work. I think that's important. Mm, yeah. So like what other mistakes do you see um, future business owners are making? 
Yeah, especially if it's expats or digital nomads, I think, you know, there's uh, a number of things that have to do with the business, but also just with their lifestyle as well. So for example, if they are indeed going from having a job at a company as, uh, and then using the side project, their passion project to turn that into their full-time business, well, there's going to be some different visa implications for that if they're living somewhere long-term. Mm -hmm. So making sure you understand that, that you can renew your visa, that, well, it's great if you're a business owner, the company, the country wants businesses, but does that mean you have to reach a certain amount of revenue or that you have mm -hmm. to have a certain number of employees or a certain legal structure, all of these things. So definitely be on top of that, making sure that you have enough runway because, you know, people can start things with a couple thousand in their bank account, but if that is going to really get you without any money and now you're stuck in a foreign country without any cash, then that's not a good position to be in. So I think really having that runway to make sure that you're giving your yourself and your business enough time to be successful. It's good to have some urgency. You should always have some urgency to try to get things done, put things out there and see again, what comes back to you. The earlier and more uh, iterations that you're able to do, the better, but you don't want to be so under the gun that you're going to be out of money in a month, uh, at least from my point of view. Obviously, some entrepreneurs have been successful that way, but uh, I think that is one thing. Another is to expect instant results. Um, you know, I started the podcast, as a lot of us do, just on a whim with, you know, talking to some friends, getting a handful of downloads. And it really is one of those things, just like blogging, just like you know, building an Instagram profile, all of these things really take a long time. I'm sure that you know that as well mm -hmm. uh, through your, through your, um, all your media. So it really takes a long time. And I, and I don't think just doing one episode or one blog post or this or that is, is going to be indicative of the future. You really need to be investing. And that goes back to the passion and the desire to keep going with it and not just uh, put it on the shelf as soon as it maybe gets a little boring or it doesn't look as sparkly as it did uh, when you were thinking about the business idea. And yeah, um, I think as well as uh, one thing I would also say is as far as having it as a side project is give yourself some room to take a break on it because mm -hmm. the life catches up to you, whether that's, you know, spouse or, uh, you know, family and kids and, um, living abroad and, and traveling from country to country. And uh, of course, managing your day job, if you're still doing that. So give yourself some space. It doesn't have to all happen immediately. I know that I was struggling with that for a while, just thinking I'm letting my side project, you know, wilt on the side of the road while uh, life is happening and it's frustrating, but I had to give myself some space and forgive myself, you know, give myself some permission to uh, take a break. Uh, and the key was to always come back to it. And, um, uh, if you come back to it after a long break, then I think that you really have the passion for it. At least that's my point of view. So I was giving myself up to a year away. I never took that long, but that was mm -hmm. my mentality. If I didn't come back within a year, then maybe that's mm -hmm. not for me. So mm -hmm. yeah, so it's, it's a great way uh, to see if this idea is really a good idea for you, and if you if this is your passion, if this is something right. that you want to yeah want to do. Yeah. So like, what are the ways like to? So you said that yeah, it's, it, it takes time like to be visible online and build all those mm. uh, social media platforms podcasts blogs um, facebook instagram so <laughs> how to and even if you for example you are still working and you want to to work on on this business idea so how to keep this momentum going because you can get really frustrated or, or yeah say no i'm i don't have the time or or i am tired so yeah, I, it's a good question. Uh, I think all of us, especially with side projects, have had this challenge if you do have a full-time job. Um, it, it does go back to the passion. I mean, I don't want to repeat myself there too much, but if you do have a passion for it, it makes it easier. However, it can still be overwhelming and can still be too much. And I think, again, being able to take those breaks and be able to come back to it, I think is really important. But to give some other ideas, uh, or one in particular, is that especially as you think about investing in your business is to take that money or the, whether that's savings or from your job and to really invest in your business and to get people freelancers from Fiverr, from whatever service, you know, build those relationships, or maybe, you know, somebody in your network that can help you, but get someone who can help you to uh, produce the podcast. And mm -hmm. so for, for, you know, I tried the first two episodes I made, I edited the whole thing and then I transcribed the whole thing. And it was a, a horrific experience. <laughs> it was just, it was so, it was just like, you know, um, it was, it was never going to work. Uh, and I quickly got an editor and a transcription person to two different people. 
and um yeah and now doing it video as well so you know get a video editor and yeah it, it, you, you have to figure out the process that works for you but i think what i'm what i'm really trying to say here is that you can't do everything and you shouldn't be your own bottleneck and the way that i decide what to outsource well naturally it depends on your budget and and how much these people cost and different things but i i realized i don't really get energy I, I lose energy. I sort of saps my energy to be doing a lot of the editing. Mm. Not always, but uh, and especially the transcription and things like that, like some of the more manual rote processes that other people are great at and they do really well and they're super fast typers or they're great editors. That's their wheelhouse. That's their ballpark. Whereas me, maybe it's more about creating these relationships and being able to produce the content or working on the website. So I do everything on the website myself, for example, I don't have a developer or I don't give the responsibility to anybody else. So, um, yeah, you just find what works for you. And, you know, you think about what you can hire somebody at in terms of an hourly rate and what your hourly rate should be. And hopefully there's a match there where they're less expensive than an hour of your time. So that's, that's it in a nutshell, but, I think when I was doing it as a side project, I was really hesitant to outsource things. That's mm -hmm. kind of what I want to say. And what I've seen is that if you're really serious about investing in your business, then to be able to scale that and to, I mean, there's so much content people have to make these days. I'm sure that, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but as, as you said, across all the social networks, all different types of video and images and podcasts and, you know, you name it. And now there's clubhouse and there's this, and, there, and it's just a crazy amount of stuff. So. Being able to stay on top of that while still driving the business forward, unless of course you're just doing a media business, but then still you probably need help to edit all this stuff. Um, I, I think it's important. So think about don't don't just throw money out the window. Think, but uh, but think about where you can leverage other people's services, where your skill set is, where what gives you energy, what takes your energy, and go from there. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, like delega delegating and outsourcing. This is a good way to um, to do that and um, do you think because I think also that you don't have to be on all the social media uh, platforms <laughs> yeah. yeah the best the best way to do is to choose where where your uh, potential potential clients are hanging out so you don't have to be like ev everywhere yeah. absolutely yeah I mean I've even cut uh, I'm, some of it you can see after some time, right? Do you, um, it doesn't mean after one or two weeks or one month, it means after some months of consistent effort, but where are you seeing the results and, and where can you, it's better to be deeper on it than to be surface level with everything. So um, yeah, on my side, I've, I've had an on and off relationship with uh, Twitter. So now mm -hmm. I've put that off again because it wasn't producing results. And um, it's just a whole, then you have to change as everyone you know probably knows, you have to change your posts from what's good on Instagram or Facebook, changing it to what works on Twitter in terms of the character count. So it was just a lot of overhead and uh, cut that and medium.com was putting stuff there for a long time to get some SEO benefits theoretically, but didn't see a lot of results from that either. So you know, try things out. I've pretty much been on everything, but now recently tried to refocus in on, on YouTube and of course on Instagram. Um, see where you're getting traction, where you're getting new followers, where people are liking your stuff and, and uh, yeah, try new stuff, try new things. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. So what are like your other ways to keep the motivation, motivation <laughs> up every day? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think for me, it's a lot of just keeping that dream alive of why I'm doing this. And it's to help people first and foremost. Uh, but second, I've just had in my career, not to go into too much depth, um, you know, maybe not in this conversation, but I've had so many ups and downs, uh, especially trying to build a, a career as an expat in, in a variety of different countries and different industries. And I'm just tired of being at the beck and call of another employer and whether or not I'm allowed to renew my visa based on keeping that job and in technology, it's very difficult to do that in, in startups. And so just having that dream of continuing to, to build my way to stay abroad, um, to be able to be more nomadic in the future, that that is keeping me going. And I have it up on the wall right in front of me uh, where we're having this discussion now mm -hmm. um, to remind myself every day of what my why is. So that's really important to me. But I've also found that the satisfaction that comes from building your own things, um, even from back in 2017 when I started doing this, is so much greater than I ever experienced with being an employee. Uh, there's a lot of benefits to being an employee, but I never felt the type of satisfaction, personal satisfaction, um, and 
just accomplishment that I feel from this. So I think that just keeps me coming back every day. I'm also just generally a very, I don't know, to-do list type of person checking items off to-do to, to mm -hmm. list. So every day when I have a full to-do list, it's like, okay, let's get back at it. <laughs> so, um, you know, for better or worse, uh, keeps me busy, but uh, doesn't allow me to, to rest too much. But I think it's just kind of my personality to keep going. And if I have something that gets me down or I'm having a low day, then maybe I take it a little bit easier, but um, uh, pretty quickly that fire comes back. Mm, wonderful, wonderful. So like, what are your plans um, for the future? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, speaking, I guess, for, for my wife and, and me, uh, we plan to stay here in Portugal and I hope to work toward getting the uh, Portuguese citizenship, which will take quite some more years, but uh, we're enjoying our time, so I'm not too worried about that. And then as things continue to open up, I'm hoping to become a bit more nomadic. I've done remote working before uh, for the company I was working for in Berlin, for example, and I've traveled to 60 countries and done scuba diving and done a lot of cool stuff. So definitely want to get back on the road. I don't know if that's going to be months at a time or just a week here or there. We're not really sure yet, but excited to start traveling again soon. And yeah, just continuing to work with our clients, continuing to create more content, just put out two new online courses. So yeah, uh, exciting stuff going on and looking forward to bigger and better and, and even more exciting projects in the future. Mm, fantastic, fantastic. So all the best for your uh, for the for the upcoming projects. So thank you very much for being with us today, David, and sharing your experience and your tips with us. So please um, tell us where people can can find you if they want to contact you. So uh, yeah, what is sure. your, what is your website? Tell us more. Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to. So uh, everyone can just check out expatempire.com. So there you can get a free ebook, Top 10 Tips for Moving Abroad, that I wrote about my travels and living abroad experiences of the last decade. And also, uh, if you're interested in talking about how we could help you to move abroad, we do individualized, personalized consulting services. So people can reach out uh, through a contact form on the website and we can set up a, a call so that we can talk through your plans and see how we might be able to help you to achieve them. And we're also on social media pretty much everywhere at Expat Empire. So we'll be happy to uh, talk to people there as well. Great, great. So thank you very much once again. So I will put all the links, a link to your website with the show notes so people can go and, um, and check it. Uh, thank you very much for listening to this podcast or watching the video version. So please uh, tell us what are your thoughts, what are your questions, what is your experience, challenges when it comes to turning your idea into a business. Uh, share in the comments. And I will be back with another fantastic episode. Thank you very much. Thanks, David. Thank you.